Ah, recess. Besides my favorite class in school, it's a good way for kids to get up, get moving, and get the wiggles out. But on bad air days when PM 2.5 levels are high, you may want to move recess indoors so that kids can play duck duck goose without aggravating asthma or other lung conditions. But how do you know when it's time to stay inside? I'll tell you. The Utah Asthma Program and the Utah Department of Environmental Quality have developed a recess guidance tool to help you make that decision. The guidance is based on the level of pollutant in the air called particulate matter, or PM2.5. These are tiny particles of dust and other floaties that just aren't good for your lungs or your health for that matter. The concentration of PM2.5 correlates with the cold weather months, particularly as it relates to Utah's inversion. That's when the warm air up here traps the cold air down into the valley below, creating a stagnant, soupy mixture. And what's the soup of the day? You guessed it, that's right, PM2.5. Sensitive students, those with asthma and cystic fibrosis, chronic lung disease, or other respiratory problems will feel the effects of PM2.5 more significantly. The recess guidance available for download at health.utah.gov asthma will help you better accommodate those students. As you can see, a PM2.5 thermometer on the guidance is divided into three benchmarks. When levels reach 35, sensitive students should avoid outdoor physical activities. At 55, sensitive students and students who are experiencing respiratory symptoms like coughing or shortness of breath should be kept inside. You won't need to keep all students indoors very often, and you should only do so when levels reach 90. So, where can you find the actual levels of PM2.5? I'll tell you. Go online to airquality.utah.gov, click on your county, and the forecast will list a green, yellow, or red air day. But remember, the decision to keep students indoors is based on actual PM2.5 levels and not the color advisories. Click on Current Conditions. The current pollution level is shown on this thermometer. From October to April, the thermometer indicates PM2.5 levels. During the summer months, it measures ozone levels. When you compare the site thermometer with the recess guidance thermometer, you can determine what action, if any, is recommended. For example, if the PM2.5 level on the website is 45, you would make the decision to keep only sensitive students inside for recess. These levels are updated every hour, and because pollution varies throughout the day, you may want to check the website before each recess break. Well, it's that simple. The guidance also comes with air quality suggestions to help you protect the health of your students. And to learn more about PM2.5, other pollutants, and what you can do to improve air quality at your school, check out the other videos and handy info at airquality.utah.gov.